What's up, Madden 17 fans? My name is Cody, and I want to welcome you to today's YouTube video. In today's video, uh, before we get into it, I want to share something really quick with you. You get out of it what you put into it, guys. So uh, my channel, I have a lot of videos, a lot of content. I've got over a thousand videos over there, and it, I always I, the one thing that I've kind of learned in all of this is if you guys ask questions and engage in the comment section, then that's how you really get better at this game. So hopefully uh, there's something that you see or something in this video that's interesting to you that will allow you to ask more questions and and then we can explore that in the comments so i really invite the questions i think that's the only way we can truly learn anything so uh, hopefully today's video adds some value to you and again i encourage you to engage with me in the comments section below all right so let's get into this so i've been playing draft champions uh, for about two days two three days now and I'm really liking it a lot. I, I think that's definitely a different type of game mode. I, I like it and hate it at the same time, so much so that I can't quite figure out exactly how I feel about this game mode. So uh, this is just a brand new draft. I think I've got the, uh, the St. Louis Rams playbook. Um, the, that's kind of the hard part is that you get a random playbook. In my opinion, that's the hardest part about the entire game mode is the playbook so if you could pick your playbook and then draft your team i think it would be much much better uh, but that's just kind of the way i feel about it but anyway so um been running a little bit more of the nickel that's kind of become more of a staple of, of what i run now and the reason is because of a video that i saw and i can't remember who posted it but I just saw it and kind of made me think of a, a concept or an idea. And that is the whole idea of what I want to do in defense in general. And you're going to see a lot of coverage in this game because I've been, I've been messing around with some different things. The whole idea is I want my defense to limit the amount of touchdowns you're going to get. So if you score a field goal, that's great. But if you, if, if I can, my real job is to keep you from scoring touchdowns. That's how I see defense. I've talked about that at length. And this does me, I think this does a pretty good job. Um, I, you know, I don't, I'm not mad at the 4-3 under or changing for any real reason outside of the fact that I think that this defense allows more different opportunities with the, with unique different coverages that you can run. And as I say that, we give up a touchdown on a stupid slip screen. So maybe I should, uh, maybe I should not have ran that right there. So defensively, I'm also trying some new things out with my personnel. So I'm running heavy linebackers. So I use the linebacker rush package, uh, which you can do that. If you guys don't know how to do that, just ask in the comments and I will help you. There's also YouTube videos out there that can help you do that. But you, I'm using the linebacker rush package. And one of the reasons is because I feel like it gets more speed on the field. And I also have realized that most people in Madden, they don't really, their their offensive line is not exactly like their their biggest strength for most people. And so I'm taking advantage of that a little bit because my defensive line, I'm, I'm now saying, well, I can pass on my defense line. I don't have to really worry about it because I know that their offensive line is not that great. And so we can get by with lesser than players. Uh, still running the bunch if I can. So I have had some experiences in draft champions where I haven't been able to run like my bread and butter, which is the bunch. But with the Rams playbook, I can run pretty much everything that I really love about the bunch. I can run it from St. Louis. And most playbooks actually do have a pretty good bunch formation. But I've also learned some other things um, that I didn't think I would learn about playbooks that I don't really, never really explored. So that's been kind of cool seeing that. I always recommend, again, before going into any game in Draft Champions, I would recommend going into practice mode with the playbooks, kind of getting familiar with them. And that way you can really develop some type of scheme or some type of thought process uh, for it. And I think it's been, it's been really helpful to me um, because number one, it teaches, I can quickly identify what's my power play, what's my counter play. I can, and, you know, I identify all of that immediately. Another thing that I've been able to do by doing that is I can develop my progressions and different things like that and know what I have and what I don't have. So I just think it's a wise move to, to go ahead and, and take care of that in practice mode as opposed to in a real game. 
you know, not being familiar, you're not knowing what you're going to do. I was hoping to be able to catch that in the back of the end zone. But the Rams playbook is interesting. It's actually, in my opinion, I ran the Ra I ran this playbook last season, and it's got a couple of different things that you can do with it. Uh, this play inside wheel. There's a bunch of good plays, and in every playbook, there's there's good plays. You know, you got to figure out what works best for you, in my opinion. And we're just trying to chuck it up in the back of the end zone. They also have uh, some pretty unique little eye form. I have a really good running back. I have Ezekiel Elliott, um, 95 overall, which is like the first time I've ever had a really, really good running back. So we'll see how he does. He's not a battle-ready guy, though. That's the other thing that's crazy is like you're used to having the battle-ready Derrick Henry or you know the battle-ready David Johnson or whatever it may be. And the reality is in draft champions, you rarely get a battle-ready guy. I don't even know that you can have a chemistry because that also means that you can't, like I don't have a conductor quarterback, which is a big deal for me. Um, it takes me a really long time to audible as a result. So that's one of the wrinkles that you don't really think is going to be a wrinkle until like you just log on and you start playing and then you realize, oh wow, I didn't realize how much I needed a focus kicker or conductor quarterback or a battle ready running back or things like that within your roster. I think that's definitely an adjustment. The cool part about draft champions is that everybody's on the same everybody's on the same wavelength, you know. Everybody's dealing with that. Everybody's dealing with a bad kicker. Everybody's dealing with the fact that they can't hot route. Everybody's dealing with the fact that they can't um, you know, they don't know they may not have the playbook that they wanted to have. So you you get that over and over again. And that's why I say draft champions is very very defensive um I believe it's a very, very defensive game. Let's see. Also, guys, real quick, one player that I've been watching a lot lately and I think is someone that you can really learn something from is D. Jones. I don't know if you guys know who D. Jones is. Um, you may not like him. He's one of the he's – a, he's a competitive Madden player. And I've noticed a couple of the things that he's been doing that, that he was doing in the beginning of the season – with different defenses and different things that he was doing and i really think he's on to something with uh, some of his concepts so definitely think you guys should go check him out you can just google uh or youtube search through youtube i don't know if he has a youtube channel but you can search on youtube d jones madden 17 tournament and you can watch he was actually in the finals against spot me please um in the first madden challenge so you know might be something there for you guys to check it out Oh, man, I didn't think he should have completed that one. Fourth and inches. This is where things get serious. Fourth and inches. So one thing that you can do, again, it goes back to practice mode. But you can come out in this 4-3 under, and occasionally, I like to stay in the same formation just for my benefit. As you can see, I didn't stop him there, but occasionally you will be able to stop it. If you really wanted to stop QB sneak and you didn't want to stop anything else but QB sneak, um, I would recommend going to goal line. I think it's the blitz C that you can run. Seems to work pretty good. There we go, a little stretch run. It's hard for me to get my setups in this defense, though. I've noticed that, too. It's a one thing about a new defense. So, again, this isn't really new. It's the same principles. It's just a different formation, and I'm using it a little more. Is the setups, man. It's so It's such a big adjustment. Like learning the new setups, learning how the formation, I mean, even though it looks very similar to the 4-3 under, it does look a little different. All right, third and two here. So one of the things that you you got to figure out, in my opinion, when you're playing Madden, is you got to figure out when to pick and choose your spots. Like here, he's probably going to run a stretch or a toss. He goes ahead and runs the toss. I should have known. I should have checked out of what I called. That was a bad play call. That's one thing about the 4-3 under. I'm going to go back to the 4-3 under here. I want to apply the nickel principles to the 4 to 3 under, but I haven't quite figured it out yet. And that's just the way it goes. See, like here, I'm completely out. I don't know what I'm, I don't even know what I called there. Going with bench again. This guy's going to run a lot of bench, corner strike type plays. That's what most people are doing. I mean, again, one of the things that's always fascinating to me is how little Madden really changes over the seasons like it changes but it doesn't i mean it and that, i don't know if that makes sense but 
hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about. If you do know what I'm talking about, give me a, a like on the video and I'll know. We've got some cool things coming up on the YouTube channel as well. I'm going to be working on a Madden, a complete Madden guide uh, that's going to help, I think, a lot of people. Uh, just kind of with the game in general and some different things that you can do to kind of put together a game plan and, and all of that kind of stuff. We're going to go through those tactics for you guys. So I think that will be really, uh, really, really helpful for uh, some people. And I don't know how I completed that. Literally, there's three white jerseys there. So two-minute drill, this is where you can kind of guarantee he's probably going to pass. How did he get open? Like, that's Von Miller covering him. It's kind of frustrating. So in this situation, sorry I'm not kind of giving breakdown. In this situation, you, you've got a hold. It's pretty pivotal that I hold him to three points. How did I not intercept that? I'm playing. And that's frustrating. I had everything and I just threw it away. I've ah oh, man, that's so frustrating. So here's where you call timeouts. I think timeouts are especially in the first half, you can play a lot of chess with your timeouts. Like you know, I, I think they're really Let's see if he runs the ball. Nope. Intercept that. We're not getting our pressure is not coming in for some reason. I'm trying to figure out why. Intercept it. Drop it. How did he catch that? Like, how in the world do you catch that ball? <sighs> All right. So, fourth or third and two. This is where you really, I mean, this is. The cool part about being in a goal line situation, something like this, where you're balling a three yard line, is there's not a whole lot of space for them to do a whole lot. That's me. Oh, wow. That was crazy. Man, that should have been an easy interception. And literally, we just almost, they almost completed it for a touchdown. So what I do in the in the goal line on the cover four is I a lot of things, but I put my corners in flats. I put a spy out there. I mean, I, I put everybody's in coverage. I mean, literally, like well, that was a, that was pretty decent. Okay, so I was kind of nervous. That probably should have been an interception, in my opinion. But we'll take the incompletion. So corners backed off. Only downside of the ramp. Oh shoot! Oh my gosh! How in the world is that even a thing? Oh my gosh! That's so frustrating. That's like the most frustrating thing. That's that's part of learning, I think, right there. And right there, that's a complete mistake. I mean, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. I made a big time mistake by even calling a play. But I thought, what could possibly go wrong? I'm just going to run a quick little inside run. The, the right tackle just literally didn't block anybody. And we're in this situation now where he's now up. I mean, it's just one little. It's not a big, big deal because he's still only up one possession. If I score a touchdown, I'm going to be up. But it is, you know, certainly a frustration, I think. Because it's like, how could that even, like, how could that guy not block him in that situation? Like, he just came through.
he's playing a very aggressive defense. A lot of cover two. One of the things that's interesting about what he's doing, which is different than what most people do, is he is running a lot more of a underneath coverage. So it's leaving the seams, it's leaving the deep corner out, it's leaving all that open. One thing that you want to look for also, and this is probably some decent advice, so you want to, I would say that if you haven't been paying attention to what I've been saying, and I would say, you know, kind of check in here. When people, you want to look for signs uh, for when to run your counter plays. So what this guy, when they start lurking and by lur and over committing, that's when you want to really kind of shape it up and run a, a, a counter play or even a constraint. That's when you really want to kind of change it up. Once they start really kind of over committing and they, you see they start going to different formations or they go to different plays altogether or they use a, a guy in a different position than they normally do or things like that. That's when you really, in my opinion, really want, that's when you want to just throw, and I only throw like one or two counters. Um, I don't throw the counter very much. Uh, and there's a reason for that. One of the primary reasons, if I could give you guys a little bit of a window into my mind, is because all you got to do is plant a seed. And their mental uh, ability, what they're going to normally do is if you just plant a little seed, they're going to, they're going to grow the seed into a, into a, into a tree. And uh, the reason I say that is because... What happens is they're like, oh, okay. Well, he's got a he's got a play. He's got a, he's got a little bit of a different play, something that I wasn't expecting. Well, next thing you know, if you fast forward and you play that kind of out a little bit, what you'll find is they start adjusting to stop that one play and they completely forget about your power play. And we cannot score a touchdown though. That's for darn sure. Having a lot of trouble in the red zone with this system because they don't have that one play that I need. This wing trips weak is a really good formation though. We're gonna try something here. Reason I go to this, I just know this. This was I ran in some of this last year. Catch that. Nice. Niles Paul's a beast of a tight end. That's one thing too, like, is you learn, like in MUT, when you're playing salary cap, you're looking for two things. You're looking for affordability and cap value. And, and, and then also you're looking for ability. So, and you just try to trim that. You trim it and trim it and trim it until you can't trim it anymore. Whereas in draft champions, you're just kind of given, uh, you, you get to pick one out of these three people and you have to pick the guy. And there's no cap limit, so you just pick the best guy for the job. So it's kind of a, interesting little dynamic i would say if i was going to give any piece of advice to you guys as far as drafting goes draft for your system not for your roster okay and what i mean by that is you need to be drafting for the the playbook you're going to be using you don't you don't want to draft like for example there's a lot of times where i've had how's that inner thank you there's a lot of times where I had better players. So if I'm, you know, I might have a 99 overall right end or something like that. But I also might have a 93 overall corner. And what do I need more in my defense? In my defense, I need two people that can cover in zone because that's the cover two, the two deep guys, okay? From there, I don't need a whole lot at corner, but I need linebackers that can run and can man coverage and can do things that most linebackers can't do. So because of that, I draft heavy linebackers. There you see that's about throwing the counter in at the right time. I think he actually missed a sack there. But uh, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of an example of something that I would say, give you some advice, draft for your team and your scheme, not for your roster, okay? And I think that's really, really important because I think a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll just draft the highest rated guy or the best player so, like, if you get a Deion Sanders, if you have the option between a Deion Sanders and a Sean Taylor, for me, I'm going to take a Sean Taylor simply because I want the hit power, right? They both can cover well in zone, but what I want is the hit power and the pursuit and all of that stuff that Sean Taylor brings. I don't necessarily need the man coverage because I don't play a whole lot of man coverage, right? So, that's, that's a little bit into my mind. I hope that's helpful if you guys... 
Uh, if you guys like that tip, in my opinion, one of the things that you can do to help me is share this video with somebody. That's all I really ask, just share it. Uh, kind of go out of your way to let somebody know that the channel exists. Let them know that this video helped you. So if you could do that for me, that would be incredible. So second and short here. Did not get a chance to set my play up and I got clicked off my user defender, but we might get lucky. Nice. Got him forcing. See, this is sometimes why I don't like to use them in a linebacker. Some people have been asking me, like, why would you use a defensive lineman? Honestly, because I don't want to mess it up. There we go. Okay, hey, there he is. Casey Hayward with a big time interception. This guy's going to quit out. But see, there's another thing. Don't get over emotional. I mean, as we kind of part ways in this video and it comes to an end, don't get over emotional. Don't just quit a game because you threw an interception because you never know what's going to happen. Stay in the fight until the end of the game. Okay, just because one bad setback comes your way doesn't mean the whole hand is a, is a sham. Play the hand. Continue to play the hand that you're dealt. Okay, over and over again. Relentless repetition. Really quick, guys, if I could ask you one favor, if this video helped you in any way and you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time.